Hello there, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. Me, Brother Henry. And uh, God has directed my path to Long Beach. Again, it's been a while since I've been out here. And I uh, couldn't find any parking. I decided to really park far away. So I'm in it to win it for a walk. I uh, got my new Bible. And uh, it's a little uh, light outside. I'm used to coming out when it's dark at nighttime, but it's the summer. It's like around 7.30 p.m. So I just wanted to just do a little uh, introductory as I'm walking, going to my destination, which I'm got a few blocks to go. Okay, but now. Wilmore City Historic District. I'm in Long Beach, and uh, it's quite an interesting uh, neighborhood that I'm in. These old houses. I don't know if these are like early 1900, late 1800, possibly. I'm not sure. Oh, 1906. Okay. And I haven't been in Long Beach for a while, but uh, God has uh, laid it on my heart to come out here and do a little street preaching. It's a little lighter than I'm used to, but uh, it is what it is, daylight savings time. So. Stumbled upon this little Hispanic church. I'm just a local evangelist and I'm going to go street preach and I heard the, uh, the preaching so I thought I'd, you know, see what was going on. <laughs> nah, I can't understand. <laughs> I'm going to go preach. Uh, I sort of lost my way. I was on 7th and Pine because there was no parking. Actually, that truck was way down where I was. <laughs> Anyways, uh, where is the where the bars are? Because I want to go preach to the to them. Isn't it around here where the you know the restaurants and everything are? Pine and Fifth. Huh? A lot of restaurants are down Pine and Third. Pine and Third. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to go try to get sinners to repent. All right. God bless you. God bless you, too, brother. Spanish brother in Christ. Uh, at any rate, uh, I'll end this here. Totally underestimated me. What are you doing with a short guy like that? I know, right? They can't can't uh, evaluate stuff correctly. Thank you. 
Not to preach God's word tonight to those who do this. You want to listen. It doesn't matter if you disregard it and trample it underfoot. Uh, at least it gets read and it goes through your ears into your soul. Wanted to read from Romans 7, starting from verse 14, talking about the carnal man and his sin condition. It says that for we know that the law, that's that's God's Ten Commandments, is spiritual, but I am carnal, this is Paul talking, sold under sin before he got saved. For what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Does that sound familiar? Do we do things that we hate and regret later? If then I do what I will not to do, I agree that the law, that it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. What is it? That's what does the bad, the sin that dwells in you, it says. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells. This is talking about the sinner. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good I do not find. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, that I practice. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Don't have eyes behind my head so I didn't see you. I find then a law that is evil and present with me. The one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man. It comes from Psalm 1-2. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members Paul says oh wretched man that I am who will deliver me from this body of death I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord so then with the mind I myself serve the law of God but with the flesh the law of sin if you're not born again you're under the stronghold of sin. But thanks be to Jesus Christ who rose from the dead to give you the power over sin. You don't have to continue in it. That's the whole beauty of being born again. You don't have to be in bondage to sin anymore. God will give you a new heart and the mind of Christ. Oh, you can turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. There's no name under heaven given among men which we must be saved but the man Christ Jesus. Jesus loves, doesn't hate. That, well, he hates sinners. He sinners go to hell. He doesn't love those that go to hell. If you go to hell, is that a loving thing? If you go to hell, is, does Jesus love you? Praise God. So that's the condition of man. Now I'm going to go to Paul's letter to the Galatians. It stirs up demons in, that inhabit people. And they don't like hearing the word of God. Because they know that their judgment is coming soon.
yourself here. God says to, I say then, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against God's spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Oh, praise God. Hey. There's some demons prevalent here, and they don't like to hear the word of God. That's okay. Right. The judgment is coming for, for demonic spirits. They're going to be judged into hell fire. Yeah, I would, I would uh, turn to Jesus before it's too late. Is that a sin? What? What is sin? That life? Yeah. That's demon possession right there. But they can be cast out if they want, if the person wants them to be cast out. I've done that before, but you have to want them out of you. And, yeah. Yeah, I know. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. Like I was saying. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery. Fornication, that's having sex out of marriage. Okay. I would I wouldn't do that. You want to know masturbate me in the sin. What do you think? I don't know. It, it is. Oh, is it? Too yeah. late. How? It's actually one step before homosexuality. <laughs> what? What? Dude. What's well, wrong with what's wrong if with If you could do that to yourself, hey, you know, you're capable of doing other homosexual acts. You just think about what I said later on and then it'll click. <laughs> Uncleanness. Lewdness, idolatry, like loving things above God, breaking the first and second commandment. People bow down to their vehicle. Sorcery, those of you that are indulging in drugs, that's sorcery. Pharmaceuticals, that's sorcery. The doctor's the new pusher now. <laughs> Hatred, which is murder. Jesus said if you hate your brother, you have murder in your heart. That's breaking the sixth commandment. Turn to Jesus! Contention. Contentions? Are you content? Are you contentious? Are you contentious? Funny, I said that word and he just started talking. Contentions? Jealousies? Oh, I could tell you a lot about jealousies. Outbursts of wrath? I'm not talking about. Uh, I'm talking about what are the works of the flesh. These are the works of the flesh. You weren't listening, that's not my fault. I don't have time to back up right now because other people were listening. Are you doing that in school? Not paying attention? Getting D's and fails? Selfish ambitions. Is that you? Selfish ambitions? Dissensions? Heresies? Envy? Here's envy. Murders, drunkenness, revelries, a lot of revelries going on in here, a lot of revelry, and the like, of which I told tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You remember that list I talked about? 
you're not gonna go. You're gonna go to hell. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Thank I'm you, just gonna you, put. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I was always waiting where it's going to go. Thank you for letting me know I'm going to help. Uh, that, that's Can I fine. Shake your, shake your hands? No, Thank I'm you. not into the shake. I'm not the president. No, I'm not into oh, shaking hands. Oh, you look like you are. No, you're eating. Go ahead. Thank you for letting me know that I'm going to help. Thank God but I'm going to help. But you don't have to. Oh. Because there's oh, good oh, news. Oh, oh, oh. I'm about to preach good news to you. Oh, you know what? Thank you. I'm going to help you. Thank you. You don't have to go. I'm telling you where you're going to go if you're on that list. This is Galatians 6, I was reading. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Okay, here we go. Mr. Hate. Mr. Hate and wrath. The fruit of the Spirit is love. Joy. Peace. Long-suffering. Kindness. Goodness. Faithfulness. I'm preaching God's word to your lost, dead soul. That's what I'm doing. You need to hear it. Close the book and give me one verse. Close the book and give me one verse. Which verse? Close the book and tell me one verse. Close it. Close the book and me one verse. Why am I in school or what? I might do that later. Okay, Romans 6.23. Romans 6.23. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. No, no, no. Okay, give me the give me the most common one, John three sixteen. You, you, the one that everybody knows. I gave you a verse. Now I'm putting it back in the, on your plate, and you can't even do it. Can't even do it. Can't even do it. See, you hate to hear the truth. That's why you're contentious, like like I was talking about. That's the spirit of contention over there. Peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. Nine fruits of the Spirit. Gentleness. Self-control. Did Mommy and Daddy teach you guys self-control? I think there's lack of self-control out here. Hey, you know, my son respects elders. He would never, never talk like you to somebody of my age. You talk like that to, to your parents? You talk like that to your parents? Huh? Disobedient to your parents? I could see it written on your face. I'm, am I name calling? Did I call you a name? I said you're being contentious, but that's not, a, I'm not name calling you. I'm not calling you something. Who said? Idiot. I did? I, I don't remember that. Against such there is no law. And those who are Christ, not you, but here, here's good news now, have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. See, you want to be evil. You want to do what's wrong. I know. I'm your number one preacher. You want to do what's bad. Because sin dwells in your mortal body. But it's going to lead you to hell because the wages of sin is death. Let us not be conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. We're right on the corner of Broadway and Pine. See, the, the heart of man is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Who can know the heart of man? Jesus says that it, it's evil above all things. But he can give you a new heart. One that's obedient to him. One that serves him. One that really loves him by obeying his commandments and keeping his commandments. And trusting Him, that's how you love God. You're obedient to Him. Now I'm going to go to Matthew 12, which I was reading earlier.
Here's what some religious people said to Jesus in the book of Matthew. Just after he said, For by your words you'll be justified, and for by your words you'll be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. Not like he wasn't doing miracles left and right already. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. Remember about that story in uh, uh, Sunday school? For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, not a whale, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You flat earthers, the heart of the earth, right there. Oh, sorry. Sorry to uh, reveal that truth to you. Jesus said, the men of Nineveh, who Jonah preached to, will rise up on the judgment with this generation that rejected him, that they were the religious Pharisees, and condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. God was standing right there in front of them. Jesus Christ is God. He was standing right there. He said greater than Jonah is here. That's awesome. Can you imagine being there walking with God? Him talking to you? Knowing your thoughts just by looking in your eyes? Oh, you would feel like a heathen. You you would not do half the things you're doing here. Getting drunk and cursing like a sailor and, and, and being sexually immoral. Anyways, the, the Queen of Sheba will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it. For she came to the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And indeed, greater than Solomon is here. Jesus Christ, the God, is standing right there. Oh yeah, praise God. Praise God. Oh, I'm preaching God. Hey, I'm filled with God's Holy Spirit. You can't stop me. I'm not being aggressive to anybody. You're being contentious, I think. What did you see? You have... Look, he's filled with demons. He's filled with demons. And I think maybe you might be too. Because I've seen a lot of crap go on. You can reject the truth. That's up to you. I'm telling you the truth. You can reject the truth. No, I'm telling you the truth that you're refusing. Oh, well, well, let's see what God does in this situation. Let's find out what happens tomorrow, who he chooses to bless and to curse. I wouldn't mess with a man of God. Yeah, I wouldn't. I've seen some bad things happen to people that tried to hurt me right in front of me. Don't have evil in your heart, sir. Don't have evil in your heart. I'm telling you, next week, next week, let's see, see what happens. If you get punished, then you'll know. I know, it's the devil. I know. For by your words you'll be justified and your words you'll be condemned. That's where I'm ending that note. When an unclean spirit, here look, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places, seeking rest and finding none. This is what happens. Multicolored coat. Yeah. And had the 12 brothers, right? Yeah. Just like Jesus and the 12 disciples. Yeah. They recycled that story from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Well, there's a lot they of kept, simulation. They kept doing that. Story, well, there's a, right? a lot of patterns, you know? Patterns. That's a good yeah. one. And with Moses, too, and Elijah. And, no. You know, it's just... Uh, it's interesting, right? Yeah, they're prophets. Jo uh, Joseph was a prophet. The number part. That's what always throws me off. Joseph betrayed by his brother. Which one? Judah. Jesus betrayed by Judas. 
they, 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 oh, they recycle the to. same story over oh, and over. Hey, I, I, don't, I, I don't remember that. I think it was uh, Simeon and... Then he says, the bad spirit will say, I will return to my house from which I came. And then he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Oh, then what happens to that man? Here's the evil spirit, then goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than itself. This is Jesus saying this. And they enter and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. That's what you get to look forward to. If you ever repent and go back. That's what that's what that's talking about. If you ever had turned to Christ and repented and then left like a Judas would have, that's what happens to you. Those spirit that spirit will come back to that house with seven worse wicked evil spirits into your residence, into your home, into your body and dwell. And you'll be in worse a worse predicament. God bless you. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside seeking to speak with him. Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother and who are my brothers? So what do the Catholics have to say about that? And he stretched out his hand toward his, his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Those are born-again saints that believe in Christ, that re repented and turned to Christ. That's family. Not those that curse and drink and are out here reveling in the world. Living a selfish existence for them drinking and doing all kinds of bad things. I'm talking is, is being a drunk and going into bars and picking up on women with STDs. That's sick. Yeah, that's sick. Well, because that's what happens in these places. And I'm trying to get them, persuade them not to go into those places. Children, turn around, set the parents up so they lose their children. I'm sorry, sir. They do that in I, I, too. I'm through. So in My conversation is through with you because, oh, because it's over. I'm hitting you dead no, you're on. you're contentious. No, I'm hitting you dead on. You're contentious. And it's only just that you no, you're you're of the devil. I'm thinking of the facts. You're of the devil. No, that's your assumption. Away from me, Satan. You shall worship the Lord your God, and Him only shall you serve. And isn't it funny that I just open to that passage. Isn't it funny, huh? I don't think it's a coincidence. I think it's God's favor speaking through me. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him, to Jesus. I'm going to show you how you can get born again. So you don't have to live according to the world, according to the world's standards. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. You don't have to revel in those things. You can turn to the risen Savior and be born again by the Spirit of God and have your life transformed. God bless you too, brother. See? See how people are receptive to God's Word and others are hateful towards hearing God's Word? Why is that? Why are people get all hateful when they hear God's Word? But others, others, others love it and say, God bless you. Isn't that funny? The goats are being separated from the sheep. The goats are separated from the sheep. That's what's going on. Nicodemus, a Pharisee, a religious leader of the Jews, came to Jesus by night and said, Rabbi, which means teacher, 
We know that you are a teacher come from God, that no one can do these things. What did he do? Rose the dead, made the blind see, made the, made the deaf hear, made the dumb speak, walked on water. He was God. That's what he did. So he said, no one can do these things unless God is with him. And he said to him, most assuredly I say to you hereafter, you shall see heaven open. Excuse me, I got turned around there. Back up. Jesus answered and said to him, here I am, I lost my page there. Most assuredly I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you born again? Is your name written in the book of life? Have your sins been blotted out and forgiven? Oh, these are very important questions. Or are you just aimlessly wandering around with no purpose in life? Just existing, huh? This is as good as it's gonna get. That's what they tell me at work. How are you doing? Just another day in paradise. That's as, it's as good as it's, if this is as good as it's gonna get, forget it. It's not worth it. There's something better. But if you, you have to have faith and hope. Faith and hope and love. For Christ, faith and hope that in the mansion that He's got prepared for you in heaven. But most people don't want to go to heaven. Most people aren't concerned about being born again. Most people are concerned about where am I going to go eat tonight? Which bar am I going to go drink at? Which girl? How many girls am I going to pick up tonight? Who am I going to sleep with tonight? It evil, wicked, evil generation. Fulfilling the lust of the flesh. But God says to walk in the Spirit, like I was saying in Galatians 6. Anyways, Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus, he didn't get it. Jesus answered, Most assuredly I say to you, here he is again, second time, reiterating it. Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I say to you, that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it comes from or where it goes. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit of God. Are you born of the Spirit of God? I hope you are. I don't want to see you bound hand and foot by an angel and cast into the lake of fire where the devil and his angels will be burning for all eternity. I don't want that for you. Hell is a horrifying place. It's a place where the worm dieth not. The fire is not quenched. There's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. But go ahead and just get drunk tonight, right? It's okay. God just lets you do what you want to do, right? The God that you've concocted in your own imagination, your God, lets you do anything you want to do. It's okay, right? Wrong. Wrong. You must repent. Jesus preached for repentance and forgiveness of sins. Nicodemus answered and said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not know these things? Most assuredly I say to you, we speak that which we know and testify that which we have seen. And you do not receive our witness. You're a child of God standing in the corner and you reject God's witness. Reject God's word. It's not going to be good. It's not going to be good for you when you take your last breath and appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's not going to be good. I can tell you, this is a place of wickedness. This is a place where heathens dwell. Turn to Jesus Christ and repent. 
Oh, I know it. Your heart is hardened. And, and it, it doesn't like to hear the truth and be in the light. But God can set you free from your dark state, your wicked heart of imagination. Feet swift to run to mischief. Oh, it's awful. What are we doing here? Where are we going? What, what's on our minds? If God could look at your mind now, you'd run away. You'd run back home. All the evil things that not only come out of your mouth, but even the way you dress. It's horrifying. I have told you earthly things, but you do not believe. How can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? This is Jesus talking. God. No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven. That is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, the Son of Man must be lifted up, and He was. You remember that story? I think that was in Numbers. And the Israelites were being bitten by snakes and dying. And Moses inter interceded and asked God to, to stop the plague. And God said, told him to make a serpent of brass and put it on a pole, and whoever looks at it will be healed. Well, it's a depiction... Jesus said he would be lifted up just as though just as the serpent was lifted up on the pole with Moses. Same thing. That whoever believes in him, that Jesus, should not perish but have eternal life. Don't look at the temporal things here. Look at eternal life later. This place is a junkyard. This is a filthy, rotten ju junkyard. And I'm here to speak the light, to persuade you into God's salvation. His plan of salvation is through His Son, Jesus Christ. Do you know Him? Are you saved? Is your name written in the book of life? Have you repented of your sins? Has the blood of Jesus forgiven you? I doubt it. Turn to Christ before it's too late. I know I'm your number one preacher. Turn from your homosexual lifestyle. Yes, I'm not politically correct. Those of you who are watch the news are brainwashed and politically correct. Sad. Totally sad. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him should not perish, which means go to hell, hell fire, but have everlasting life. That's heaven. That's the place you'll go if you repent and are born again. But if you don't, you will perish. could be tonight. You're not promised tomorrow when your father's the devil. Be sober. Be vigilant, God says. Your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Could be you. If you're not born again, could be you tonight. I'm trying to scare the hell out of you, yes. I want you to turn to Christ. I want you to turn to the risen Savior. He rose from the dead. You can read it for yourself in the Bible that you have, most of you guys have, at home. You don't have to... Believe me, you can read it for yourself and believe God's Word. That's what I want you to do. But I want to encourage you and persuade you to do that. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn it, but that the world might be saved. Oh, but for those that want to say I'm condemning people, look what 3.18 says. He who believes in Him is not condemned. But he who does not believe is condemned already. That's, it is what it is. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation. That the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. If you peep, most of you people died tonight, you'd be horrified when God replays the video that of you rejecting His truth and His Son, living how you want to live, dictating how your life has to go with no regard of Jesus. It's awful. 
but you get to go to hell. If that's that's your wish, that'll be God's command. It's your choice. You have your free will to turn to God and repent. It's up to you. But if you reject that truth and trample His word under His feet and cast it beside you, you have nobody to blame but yourself. No, and it's going to be horrifying when God says, Away from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. That's scary. I don't want that to be said to you. I want you to hear, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into thy rest. Come and eat from the tree of life. Drink from the water of everlasting life. Doesn't that sound good? Doesn't that sound appealing? Oh, it does. It is appealing. But it says, again, I'll reiterate this. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. So you got to be a real man and a real woman about it. you got to look in the mirror and accept responsibility for your actions. Accept accountability for the wrongs that you've done against the Holy God. And turn. Turn at His rebuke. Turn at God's rebuke. But see, people that call themselves real men and real women won't do that because they want to justify the things that they're doing that are wrong. They want to justify their wrong actions. The, the evil that they do, they think it's okay in their own mind. See, woe to those who call good evil and evil good. Woe to you. Woe to you. That's what God's Word says about you. That's almost borderline blaspheming the Holy Spirit of unforgiveness. I wouldn't go there. They tried to do that to Jesus. You do not want to blaspheme the Holy Spirit. You do not want to do that. Your end may come tonight. Severe heart attack. Could come. God's not playing with you and your sin. He's being merciful and long-suffering, showing kindness and being gentle, having me read God's Word to you. But what do you do? You walk to the bars like a zombie, like, like a robot, waiting to go get drunk and loaded and have sex with your girlfriend. It's terrible. It's awful. You should have conviction in your heart. You should. You're, you should have conviction in your heart. No, because you 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 got a, a wicked heart of disbelief. Man, feet swift to run to mischief, too. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen, that they have been done in God. Turn to Jesus Christ, people, before it's too late. I implore you to do that. You don't want to have your, your mind lost. You don't want to wind up old uh, with uh, Alzheimer's disease with a lost mind talking to yourself in the mirror God will let that happen if that's what you you want I've seen a lot of people walk talking to themselves to nobody nobody's there you know who they're talking to they're talking to demons oh but let's not talk about demons right it's upsetting them that's okay Jesus gave me the power to cast them out if anybody has any spirit in them that they want out of them, I'll cast them out in a heartbeat. But everybody's got to get away because they're going to jump into you. They will jump into you. See, I'm protected by God's angels and I have the Spirit of God in me. Those things used to live in me. Very hateful demons used to be in me. But then God showed me my heart in my mom's bathtub. 9-11-2006 showed me my heart. Let me see it how he's seen it and let me see it for myself how it looked and I was horrified and I repented of my sins and I turned to Christ 
Now I'm a new creation in Christ. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. And that could be you too. It's wonderful to walk in the light. To walk in the truth. To trust Jesus. To trust God. Oh, there won't be there won't be any fire departments in hell to put the fire out. There won't be any fire extinguishers or fire hydrants or fire hoses or anything to put you out. There won't even be a drop of water in hell for you. If you die in your sins, there won't be a drop of water in hell for you. Only weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth. Turn to Christ before it's too late. Trying to love on you. Trying to tell you the truth. To bring you in the light. Get you out of the darkness. God's Word says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. Nor stands in the path of sinners. Nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's my delight, the law of the Lord. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the light next to Christ. And in his law, he meditates day and night. He dwells in me. Communicates to me. Lives in me with his spirit. God's word says he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. That bring forth the fruit in its season. Whose leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does, he prospers. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Yeah, it is. It's, it's the devil's kingdom. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. For those sinners that want to judge me, let's read that again from Psalm 1. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. God says, come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool, if you are willing and obedient. You shall eat the good of the land, but if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken.
Isaiah 59, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, nor is his ear heavy that he cannot hear, the one that formed the ear. But your iniquities, inner evil sin, iniquities, bad, worse than transgressions, have separated you from your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue has muttered perversity. Oh, sorry. Sorry about that. No one calls for justice, nor does any plead for truth. They trust in empty words and speak lies. They conceive evil and bring forth iniquity. They hatch vipers' eggs and weave the spider's web. He who eats of the eggs dies, and from that which is crushed, a viper breaks out. Their webs will not become garments, nor will they cover themselves with their works, for their works are works of iniquity, and the act of violence is in their hands. Their feet run to evil, and they make haste to shed innocent blood, and their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity, wasting and destruction are in their paths. The way of peace they have not known. Crooked paths. Whoever takes that way shall not know peace. Therefore justice is far from us. Nor does righteousness overtake us. We look for light, but there is darkness. For brightness, we, but we walk in blackness. We grope for the wall, like the blind, and we grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noon, at noonday, as at twilight. Sir, please? God's word says we are as dead men. In desolate places, we all growl like bears and moan sadly like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, but it is far from us. For our transgressions are multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. And as for our iniquities, we know them. In transgressing and lying against the Lord, and departing from our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering the heart of words of falsehood. Justice is turned back, and the righteous stands afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and equity cannot enter. So truth fails, and he who departs from evil makes himself a prey. That was from God's holy word of Isaiah 59. The prophet. God's word in 14 John. Let not your heart be troubled, Jesus said. You be, believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going and how we can know the way. But Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. 
Those are the classic words of Jesus. Fast forward a little bit of this here. I think I'm going to end it here. Signing off. Hello there again. It's Brother Henry. Made a pit stop over here at Spires in Wilmington. It's one of my favorite uh, dining spots. But I wanted to show you guys this this uh, refinery with. Uh, go close. Isn't that neat? Very patriotic. At any rate, uh, I'm going to go in here and have some dinner before I uh, get home. See you later.